So now that we've calculated the shear force and the torque acting around the centroid of that bolt group, um, now what we need to do is to try to calculate the amount of force acting on each one of these bolts. Uh, now firstly we can have a look at what happens due to uh, this uh, shear force element, um, we'll call it V for now, and then after that we'll look at what happens for the torque. All right. So what we can assume for the shear force Um, we can make an assumption that each one of these bolts, one, two, three, four, five, um, equally supports the shear force. Uh, so we can take um, a calculation for the amount of force on each bolt, we'll call that uh, FS, uh, and this is equal to our shear force divided by uh, the number of bolts that we've got. All right, so for this we then get um, V, which is 30 uh, kilonewtons, um, divided by the number of bolts, which is 5, and then so we get the number of, of the force per bolt, which will be equal to 30 divided by 5, which is 6 kilonewtons. Okay. Um, the second thing that we should look at is uh, the force that's applied onto each bolt due to the torque. Now what we see here is um, when we apply this torque onto uh, each section here, uh, there will be a tendency that um, each bolt has a force being applied onto this section. Um, it will be at 90 degrees to, um, to a radial line uh, to each one of these bolts. So we'll have um, this force here, which will act on uh, what we called bolt number two in the previous video. And we called this bolt number one in the previous video, and three, and four, and five. All right. Um, so for bolt number one, I can draw a radial line to that point, and we'll see... Um, a force acting on an angle of 90 degrees um, and we'll look at calculating that value soon. Um, because this is further away we expect that this bolt will see um, will support a larger force. Um, for number four there will be a force which acts in this direction um, we could call this uh, F T number four. Um, this would be called F T for number one. This is F T for number two. And we can continue around the shape for each one of the bolts. And number three. Okay, so each one of these bolts will support a combination of the force that it has to support as a result of the torque, um, which we've drawn a representation here, um, and also the force that it has to support because of the shear acting on it. And so um, we can draw that value here on each one of these bolts, um, acting down, another one acting down, another one acting down, and one more. Uh, acting down. Um, the value of force for each one of these would be equal to um, our value of 6 kilonewtons that we calculated before. Okay. All right, so in the next video, um, we'll look at a relationship that we can use to uh, calculate the value of um, FT1, uh, FT2, FT3, and uh, FT4, and FT5. Um, the uh, one thing to, to note here, though, is um, 
the ones that are furthest away will end up with the largest value of our force. Um, that's probably going to be bolt number one and bolt number three. Um, what we see is that um, the forces acting on bolt number one combine together to give us a larger resultant force compared to, say, this one, compared to this value here, and compared to, say, uh, this one here and this one here. Um, so I can say that um, to answer number B, the bolt which has the maximum load acting on it is probably this bolt here, bolt number one, or the one on the top left side. All right, uh, so in the next video, we'll uh, look at the rest of this question. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.